Hey, welcome to another episode of Midday Mastery with myself, Steve Woody, Online Mastery. And today I'm going to be talking about the main reason that people leave your website. So the last couple of videos that I've done, I've talked about sales funnels and I've talked about other things that you need to consider. And one of the questions that I got recently, because I asked people for feedback, one of the questions I got is, when people land on a website, how long do they stay on a website and why do they leave? Why do people leave my website? Because people are spending a lot of effort getting traffic to their website. And then when that traffic arrives on the website, it's, it's not converting. And so this is a conversion issue. And one of the things that people want to know is why, why it's not converting. So there's a few reasons, and I'm going to jot this down on the whiteboard and talk about it. But the first thing I want to say is that, um, hey, hey, Michelle, how you doing? Um, one of the things I would say is that if your message in your advert or if your message in your whatever it is that you're doing to drive people to your website, if that message is different to the message on your website, people are going to find an incongruency. There's going to be a difference. So whatever you're like, let's just say, uh, for example, that you're running an ad. Because like, I know we can talk about friends and family and we can talk about warm traffic, but I want to really focus on the point of having cold traffic, having people that you don't know. So if you have people that you don't know come into your website and they land on your website, if the message that you deliver here is different to the message that they see here, they, there's going to be a disconnection. They're going to leave. So you need to make sure that whatever you do throughout your entire process, there's congruency. So congruency is the number one thing. You need to make sure that you're congruent through what you do and how you do it. So one of the things that I would say is that the, the main challenge that people have is coming from a place, and I can, I can relate to this, coming from a place of scarcity, coming from a place where people are really fearful and they need to get traffic, so they do things to try and generate that business. They do things to try and generate traffic, to try and get people interested. And they'll do things that not, is not necessarily congruent with themselves. And so when people then end up landing on their website, there's a different message, a different tone. Something's different between the ad copy or the message that you're putting out there and what people are seeing when they land on the site. So congruency is really important. Make sure that you're in alignment with everything you're doing. When people land on a website, this is the first thing that you have to consider. Now, it may be your home page. It may be a different page. It may be a landing page. There's different pages that people land on depending on what you want them to do. But let's use the example that someone's going to land on your page, your home page, your landing page, whatever it is. And the only difference between the two, and I'll come back through the questions and I'll have a look at this in a minute. But the only difference between having a, a home page and having a landing page is that a home page may cover a few things. It may say that you do one, two, and three, and it has kind of an overview of what you offer. So people tend to use a home page as a way to um, say, look, I'm a book author, and I'm a speaker, and I'm a coach, as an example. Or, you know, I, I'm a builder, and so I do estimations, and I do the repair work, and I do like ongoing maintenance, like whatever it may be. Or, you know, if you're in the health and fitness industry, I do PT sessions, and I offer supplements, and I offer, you know, whatever. It's like there's normally, normally on a landing page or homepage, three things that you offer. And you might talk about your blog, and you might talk about having an opt-in, and you might talk about your core services, and you might have some testimonials, but it's more of a generic message. Now, what most people do is when they're sending people to their website, they'll just run people directly to their homepage. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But the reality is that you're, if you're targeting someone specifically and you're sending them to your homepage, they're just then left to fend for themselves. Or if you say, what's your website? And you send people to your homepage, they're kind of just left to fend for themselves. They do their own thing. They land there. They go and do whatever. If you've got a targeted ad, if you know the pain and the problem, we talked about this in previous videos, if you know the pain and the problem and you've connected with your customer avatar, then you're going to have a very specific message with them. If you've got a very specific message, it makes sense to send them to a very specific page, i.e. a landing page. And when they land on this page, when they get on the landing page, the first thing that you need to do, the first thing that you need to do is you need to let them know that they are in the right place. Sorry, my pen's done. I'm going to see if I've got another colour here. 
they need to know that they are in the right place. Okay, so you need a headline. And this needs to be a clear headline. You need a clear headline that lets them know that they are in the right place. So it could be anything. It could be, do you want more traffic in your business? Would you like more conversions in your business? Would you like to lose weight? Whatever it is, whatever. Like, there's no right or wrong reason here. You have to test. You have to use a headline, and then you have to have a variation of your headline, and you basically test to see which one works best, and then you just keep improving and improving and improving and improving and testing. And I talk about this all the time. It is always, always about testing. Always about finding what works for you, and then finding a better version, and just keep improving it, improving it, improving it until you're happy. Okay, you should always be testing. Once you've got your clear and compelling headline, this needs to do two things. For them, what it needs to do is let them know they're in the right place. They need to know they're in the right place. And it also is called the hook. So it needs to hook them in to want to know more. It's got to make them want to continue reading. This needs to get my attention and make me want to continue reading. That's it. Psychologically, that is the only purpose of the headline. Am I in the right place and do I want to know more? Am I in the right place and do I want to know more? That's it. Then, because this could be quite creative, you could play with the creative right side of the brain, you could make it playful, a little bit intriguing maybe. There's lots of ways that you can do it and you can look at some great examples. Like Airbnb used a great example, theirs just said, welcome home. Now if you know Airbnb and you know what they stand for, you'll know that you know, they're about home away from home, they want you to feel comfortable in not in a hotel environment, so welcome home. It was really, really good and it worked. So you have your headline. Underneath your headline, you may have like a description or a slogan or a little bit of text that's a little bit more logical, that talks through a little bit more of what it is that they're going to get or they're going to do. So this is the hook, this is the intrigue, this is letting them know in the right place, and this just backs that up. So this could be, do you want more traffic? I'm just giving you an example, I'm literally just pulling this off the top of my head, okay? Um, and as an example, and this could be, we can get you four times more traffic in your business without spending any more money on adverts. Does that make sense? So that's how you can have a headline and then a subheadline. So the headline is like hooking them in. The subheadline is like giving them information. And then the thing that you need underneath is a call to action, a button, something that is clear, something that stands out, something that they can see is something to click on. And this could say, click here, because you're giving them an action. You're giving them an action. You're telling them what to do. Click here. Two, get started. Okay, click here to get started. If you put that on there, then they know that if they click here, they're going to get started. So here is my hook. Here is what I'm doing. Here's what to do next. One of the biggest problems that people have is they don't resonate with the person. There's not congruency between sending them to the page, and when they land on the page, you need to continue that congruency. You let, need to let them know what they're getting, why they're getting it, and how they can get started. You always need to take them through, step by step, what it is that they need to do. And so, even on your homepage, this is called the hero section. They call it the hero section, it's the top section, it's the first thing they see, and if you imagine, there's an imaginary line here, this is called the fold. Now, the word fold comes from, if you remember newspapers, uh, the way that newspapers used to be stacked up on the street is they would be folded in half. And so what would happen is you would see all of the most interesting information on the newspaper that would make you want to buy it. And so when the newspaper was folded in half, the first bit of the newspaper that you saw was called the fold, above the fold. So everything above the fold on a website is what is initially seen when the screen loads. Okay, so it's the first thing that they see before they scroll down. Now, this is going to change because depending on what browser they're on, depending on what size monitor they have, depending on anything that they're using, there's so many different variations, this imaginary line could change. It could be higher, lower. But what you really want to try and do is maximize this space. You don't want to try and cram too much in. Look at Google, one of the most visited websites in the world, and all it is is a search box. Okay, white space is a good thing. Letting things breathe is a good thing. But you need to have a headline. You really need to have a subtitle or something that explains the headline, and you need to have a clear call to action. 
so that people know what to do. If you can just get that, that stage, that's all I'm going to do in this video. I'm not going to make this too long. I'm not going to go on too much. If you've got any questions about this? And also, if you've got a landing page, I'd like to see it. Post a link below to your landing page because I would like to see your headlines. You can look at Spotify, Uber. You could look at um, uh, Slack. You can look at Wonderlist. You can look at Airbnb. You can look at all the big companies and what they do. They, they invest a lot of money in this sort of stuff. Talk to a lot of the good copywriters, look at the Mike Dillards, the Frank Kearns, look at the Tony Robbins, look at Russell Brunson, look at all of the people out there who are doing this and look at what they're doing and look at how they're doing it. They're hooking you in. They're making this intriguing enough for you to want to learn more. They're telling you what you're going to get and then they're telling you how to get it. They're hooking you in, they're telling you what you're going to get and they're telling you how to get it. Chris, that is a great question. I'm going to go back through now and have a quick look at the questions, but does that make sense? I'm not going to make this a long video today. It's going to be quite a short one, but I'm just going to look through um, some of these comments. Um, Simone, hey, how you doing? Uh, so what happens when you offer two lots of services, one for individuals and one for organisations? Well, that's a great question. If you have two lots of services, one for individuals and one for organisations, and you have two separate landing pages, have a landing page for your individuals and have a landing page for your organisations. And any of your ad campaigns that are going to individuals, go to that landing page. Any of your ad campaigns or any of your marketing or any of your messaging for an organization goes to that landing page. A website is just a collection of pages. That's all it is. Website, people get so caught over website. Forget the website. You've got to imagine we talked about sales funnels and we have a process of taking people from A to B. And that's all this is. You're taking people from A to B, from their problem to their solution. And so the landing page is the first step on that journey. So it's where they land for you to tell them more, for them to be able to carry on to the next step. And there's other things that we can put on a landing page, and I'll cover that in other videos. We'll go through that later. I don't want to get too caught up in the uh, mechanics of the entire page and the other things that you need to add in. I just really want to work on the hero section. I want to really look at the first thing. You've got about three seconds. When someone lands on your site, you have about three seconds for them to go, I'm interested or I'm not. And it's not about design. I mean, it needs to look okay, but it doesn't need to be like professionally designed to like such a high level. But something to consider is also what a lot of other people do is the background. Because what a lot of people do, and I've seen this, and this is crazy, a lot of people have a really good headline. They have a, a clear subtitle and they have an obvious call to action. And then they have a random image that has nothing to do with it. Like a random image. Whatever your background image is, either have it clear and clean so it's not distracting. Or if you're going to have a photo or an image, have it so it's got a, a, a filter on the front of it that, that darkens it out. Because you don't want the image to be the main attraction. You want the, the, resonate, the resonation needs to be within the copy, within the content. They need to read it and see it. If they can attach what you're saying to an image that actually sort of... Um, extends that so like you can read this and then there's an image that goes with it that's great use it to go with but don't use it to fight or to overpower too many people have these crazy backgrounds and people are focused on the background and not on what they need to be focused on remember the only thing here that you want people to focus on is this call to action they need to read this and understand that they can go from here to here because we're getting them to take action we're getting them to take the next step so that's what we need a lot of people are using videos in the background, and that's fine. Uh, Toggle, T-O-W-G-L, is a great example. Time tracking software. We give you software so that you can track your time and the things that you need are important to you. And then they use these videos of different examples of, of, of people tracking their time, which is really, really good. Works really, really well. So if you're going to use a video, that's fantastic. You can, but make sure it relates. Like on Airbnb, their background video for a long time was people going in and meeting the hosts and relaxing and being in these homely environments, but in other countries. And so it resonates. It goes with it. You know, you look at Uber and you look at their background and it's a nice car that you're being driven around in. So whatever you look at in terms of the background, it needs to relate. It needs to, it needs, there needs to be that congruency. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to look through some of these comments. Just uh, any questions you've got, let me know. Uh, I think I suffer from this issue. I offer service to individuals and market that on Facebook, but I'm also a HR consultant and serve businesses. My site covers both. Maybe you need two separate websites. Maybe you have a website for individuals and maybe you have a website for organisations. Maybe you have the same website, but you split it. But I would definitely like... I had this conversation yesterday with someone and um, I can't remember what it was. I was talking to somebody and they were saying about they had two different services. Oh, that was it. It was a photographer. I was talking to a photographer and this photographer said they wanted to do corporate branding and they also wanted to do weddings. And I said, great, that's two websites. 
And they were like, oh, no, no, I want to do it together. There's two websites. That is two websites. You have a wedding website and you have a corporate branding website. The two have nothing in common. And the people that are looking for a wedding probably aren't interested in corporate branding. And if you start mixing that message, because there are a lot of wedding photographers who only focus on weddings, who are going to get the attention of people that want a wedding. And you have corporate branding photographers who only focus on corporate branding, who are going to be getting those customers. If you're giving 50% of your energy to two different places, who do you think is going to win? The person giving 50% of their energy or the person giving 100% of their energy and attention? Okay, you need to focus on one thing, one outcome, one mission, one purpose, one step. One thing, just do the next thing, that's all it is. You remember back to my last video when I talked about the guy getting shot? You don't tell him he's been shot, you give him some morphine. You take them through the step-by-step -step process, one thing at a time. You can let them know the big picture, that's okay, but you don't want to overwhelm them. That's why I'm not giving you the whole landing page today, I'm just giving you one thing. Just do this first, apply it to your business, and then come back and we'll look at the next thing. So hopefully that helps. Nothing wrong with having two websites if that's what you need. Or just having two separate landing pages. Uh, cool, awesome, awesome. Hello everyone, Avnish, Rhett, hey. So should we stick clear of rotating banners? Such a good question. Personally, I can't stand them. I think they're a distraction. Specifically because of what I've just spoke about. Rotating banners. Focus on one thing. What is a rotating banner? It's many different things. It's factually proven that people do not look past the first slide. And also, and I'm going to give you an example here. Imagine this. You've got this thing and it says, um, I want you to do, or check this out. And you're like, da, 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 oh, oh, it's gone, next one. Oh, uh, da, da, oh, oh, it's gone, next one. Oh, da, 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 da. People are thinking about too many different things. You're trying to capture their attention, right? But it's like, oh, I want to, get, I want to let you know everything I do. I want to let you know everything I do. I want to give you this and this and this and this. It's too much. One thing. I had to get started. If you go onto my website and you look at the very top of my website on onlinemastery.co.uk, there's a little button and there's a button at the top and it says get started. There's no rotating banner, it's one thing, I want you to get started. When you click on that, I'll ask you a series of questions and that will point you in a direction. So instead of having a rotating banner that offers everything you do, have a simple questionnaire that points people to what they need. So you can give them what they need. So rather than sort of projecting, I think you want this, I think you want this, I think you want this, you ask them, what do you need? Okay, you need this, here it is. Now it's different for shops, e-commerce shops. I understand you've got products that you want to push, you've got things you want to promote, there's ways to do it. I'm not saying rotating banners don't work in some situations, but for the majority of cases, for small business owners, for people who've got products and services, a rotating banner, it takes up a lot of retail space. I see the logic behind it, but it's been factually proven now it just does not work. It doesn't convert. People don't click through on it. And a lot of the times, you spend a lot of time designing it. They slow the website down. Google doesn't like them that much. There's a lot of challenges with them. You're better off just to scrap them and have just one hero section with one thing. Focus on one thing. Get them to the next step. That would be my advice. Hope that helps. Just shared your video. Uh, thank you very much, Will, for sharing it. I appreciate it, mate. Just let me know. Vinny, hello. Mike Daniels, hey. So, guys, if you've got any questions, I'm going to hang around for a couple more minutes, but this is going to be quite a short one today. I don't want to sort of go over too much. Um, one thing, right? Work on your hero section. Have a look at your homepage. Start there. Then if you've got landing pages, have a look at those. You don't need to overcomplicate this. It doesn't need to be professionally designed by, um, you know, a creative team. You could have a simple plain background with a call to action, with some text, with a simple button. You can have this set up in minutes. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. In fact, I've got examples, and if you're using any of the templates that I use, if you're using the frameworks that I use, like I use the X Team. So if you're on WordPress and you're using X Team, then let me know and I will send you a template that you can just plug straight into your site. If you're not, then obviously I can't help you with that. But if you are, send me a message below. Say, I'd like the template, and I will send you a template for this that you can use and just repeat, uh, just replace with your images and stuff like that. So I'll just give you something that you can just put in there for now. I would say that if you can just get this one thing nailed, it would help. Now, there's one other thing I want to cover, which is really important. You can do this, and you can implement this, but the one thing that you need to do is you need to track this. If you don't have analytics, I'm talking about you want both Google Analytics to track people that are coming to the page, and you also want Hotjar. Hotjar allows you to do heat map tracking. And I've got a discount code. If you want a discount code for Hotjar, I've got a discount code you can use. Just send me a message, say, I would like Hotjar in the comments, and I will send you a PM with a discount code so that you can actually get this. Because you do have to pay for Hotjar. 
but it's worth it because you can work out, you can track the mouse of your users. So you can see where their mouse is on the screen. You can see what they're clicking on. You can see how they're interacting. You can see a heat map of how far people are scrolling down and you can find out what works. You get a much better idea. So I would say you definitely want Hotjar. You definitely need to get this one section up. You definitely need to work on your content. You need to make sure there's congruency from wherever they've come before to this page. Does that make sense? Do you SEO your landing pages? Honestly, I use SEO good, I use best practice, but I don't focus on SEO. I don't focus on SEO because for me, SEO is a long game. And I'm like, if you're gonna have a landing page for an offer, the reality is that every offer that you create has a shelf life. Like if you're doing a blog post, yeah, SEO the crap out of it. But if you're doing a landing page, the reality is that every offer that you create has a shelf life. And there is a finite amount of people that you can target. It may be that you've got two or three years out of this and that's great. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't SEO it because SEO is part of your marketing strategy. SEO is not the one thing. Pay-per-click is not the one thing. Social media marketing is not the one thing. It is just a part of a marketing strategy. So you do a bit of SEO, a bit of pay-per-click, a bit of social media marketing, a bit of direct mail, whatever it takes, but you have a, a different things, right? And all of that encompasses your whole marketing strategy. So SEO is important, and I will do SEO best practice, I will make sure that my site loads quickly. I'll make sure I've got an SSL certificate because Google loves that. I'll make sure that there's enough copy and content on there, that it's structured with the right heading tags in the right order. You know, all of the, the good practices that you should do for SEO. But I'm not only retentive about it because the amount of time it would take Google to index this page and for it to get found, I, I, I can get much more engagement for a Facebook ad going to this page than I can, you know, I, I, can, I can target people a lot better through getting them into an opt-in and then getting them into the landing page that way than I can through SEOing. So I'm not saying you shouldn't SEO, like there's definitely a space for it, but I wouldn't be focusing all of my marketing effort here. I'd be focusing my marketing effort on a blog post and that blog post would have a link at the end that sends people to the landing page. So I would SEO the blog post and then have a call to action. Every blog post that you create should have a call to action at the bottom of it, what you want them to do next. You go to my um, homepage and you look down at the customer avatar or any of the blog posts, you click on them, at the bottom of the blog post, there's a webinar or there's something to do or something to sign up, there's a next step. Because you want to be constantly taking your prospects by the hand and leading them through the journey from here to here to here to here to here. From op ad, ad to opt-in to landing page to sales page to thank you page to follow up. You want to take them through step by step. One thing at a time. Start with the hero section. Work on your home page, start with a hero section, working on your landing page, just get that. Get that first and then come back and we'll talk about other things, all right? I'll do another video tomorrow and in the video tomorrow, I'm gonna continue this. I'm gonna talk about the rest of the landing page, all right? But for now, spend today, just work on this, work on one thing. And if you would like me to work personally with you on your business, where we map all of this out, as well as everything else, from getting traffic, getting it to your website, converting it, and getting sales on the back end. If you want me, personally, for six weeks to work with you and create all of this with you, then send me a message. Because on the 1st of March, I'm gonna be opening up my course, I'm gonna be working with a handful of people, and I'm gonna be doing this for your business. If you're interested, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to speak to you about it. Otherwise, have an amazing day, and I will speak to you tomorrow. Take care, bye-bye.